Mankind is at a crossroads. Today's decisions will significantly impact how people live in the future. We have already made a video about man-made climate change and rising temperatures on Earth. If humanity continues to emit vast amounts of CO2, temperatures will continue to rise and natural disasters such as wildfires and hurricanes will increase. Green energy can help us save greenhouse gases, massively reduce energy costs, and improve the quality of the air we breathe, just to name a few of the positive effects. This video is about one of the most interesting green energies, solar energy, and how spaceflight has helped make this technology a breakthrough, despite all the odds. More about that later in the video. Since the 2000s, the solar industry has been on the rise. More and more watts of solar energy are being generated every year as it has mutated from one of the most expensive forms of energy to one of the cheapest. In particular, Germany has taken the lead and in 2010, 43% of all solar installations worldwide were in Germany. Solar energy has exceeded all expectations and forecasts and has grown exponentially year after year. The USA has far more hours of sunshine than Germany, yet the possibilities of solar energy were ignored for a long time with targeted campaigns by the fossil energy companies. Here, more and more homeowners are relying on the power of the sun. However, there is still a long way to go before the USA catches up with other countries and becomes independent in its energy supply. So far, only about 2.3% of electricity consumption comes from solar power. In 2008, however, the figure was a measly 0.1%. Neotric Power is a solar company based in Orange County, California. Most of our audience is also from the US, and many of them are based in California. Sven, who writes the scripts and produces the videos, also lives there and knows the owners personally. He is convinced of solar energy, which is why we can only recommend this solar company. California has already hit the 1 million solar roof milestone. If you live in SoCal, and want to save money on energy costs, learn more about current incentives or tax credits, call or email them, because never before has it been more rewarding than now. The use of solar energy is much older than you think. The ancient Romans and Greeks used concentration mirrors to concentrate sunlight and make fire. In 1839, the then 19-year-old French physicist Alexandre Edmond Becquerel experimented with a platinum anode and cathode immersed in an electrolyte. He discovered that when one is exposed to light, a voltage occurs between them. The generation of voltage and electric current in a material upon exposure to light is called the photovoltaic effect. In 1883, American inventor Charles Fritz made the first solar cells from selenium, but unfortunately, it had less than 1% efficiency at converting sunlight to electricity. A few years later, 1887 to be precise, it was the observation by Heinrich Hertz of the influence of ultraviolet radiation UV on metal surfaces in a spark gap, the so-called photoelectric effect, that was another milestone. However, this effect, the release of electrons from a semiconductor or metal surface by irradiation, could not be explained at first. In 1905, an employee of the patent office in Bern published a possible explanation which was universally rejected by nearly all physicists, among them the leading physicists of their time, Max Planck and Niels Bohr. 
Only years later was this idea experimentally confirmed. By the way, the name of this third-class patent employee was Albert Einstein. For his explanation of the photoelectric effect that light itself consists of localized particles, he received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921, whereby it should be mentioned that the wave-particle duality, a concept of quantum physics, in that every particle or quantum entity may be described as either a particle or a wave, contradicts our classical understanding of physics. Here's what Albert Einstein wrote about this. It seems as though we must use sometimes the one theory and sometimes the other, while at times we may use either. We are faced with a new kind of difficulty. We have two contradictory pictures of reality. Separately, neither of them fully explains the phenomena of light, but together they do. In 1954, the first practical silicon solar cell was developed at Bell Labs with an efficiency of 4%. A key role for this was played by Russell S. O. already in 1940, because he had been investigating some silicon samples, one of which had a crack in the middle. He noticed that in this particular sample, current flowed through when it was exposed to light. O. had inadvertently made a PN junction, the basis of a solar cell. Thirteen years later, Calvin Fuller, Gerald Pearson, and Darrell Chapin created the first silicon solar cell. The first silicon solar cells were expensive to produce, and early efforts at commercialization were not initially a huge success. With the advent of the Space Age in the late 1950s, the search for a way to power satellites in the Earth's orbit gave solar technology a major boost. Launched on March 17, 1958, the Vanguard 1 research satellite was the fourth artificial satellite ever launched and the first satellite to use solar electric power. It is also the oldest satellite still in orbit around the Earth. 1962 saw the launch of Telstar 1, the first solar-powered telecommunications satellite which made live transmissions possible. In 1966, NASA launched its first orbiting astronomical observatory, OAO-1. It was also a solar cell-powered satellite instrumented to make precision astronomical observations and measure the absorption and emission characteristics of cosmic objects. During the Apollo program, the sun's energy was used, and among other things, the solar wind composition experiment was operated. Particles of solar wind were captured in an exposed aluminum foil, and it was the first definitive isotopic measurement of solar material. In addition, solar panels are cited as spin-offs of NASA's manned lunar landing, more specifically, NASA's Apollo Lunar Module Program. This is why this technology was used extensively on the first American space station, Skylab. Much has happened since the humble beginnings and in 1973, the Solar One project installed the first residential solar array. And in 1979, under President Jimmy Carter, the first solar panels were installed on the roof of the White House in Washington. These were removed again by his successor, Ronald Reagan. Thanks to current bifacial solar cells, which means that they are two-sided, the energy yield could be increased considerably. Bifacial solar cells are also used on the International Space Station, ISS, and thanks to each of the 16 solar arrays, 
Even the energy-hungry Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer AMS02 can be operated. Thank you for your attention. And don't be ignorant. Deal with solar.